Hello, welcome to Furious Driving, and this is my 1988 Volvo 740, and this is the radio from my 1988 Volvo 740, and it doesn't work. So, a little while after I bought the car, having got bored of listening to static, I stuck in a Sony head unit which got taken out of my little red mini. However, it doesn't look right, it doesn't fit properly, it only works on one speaker, so let's see if we can sort something out. Grab yourself a cup of coffee and come along for the not ride, the sitting in the drive, trying to do wiring. Oops. So climbing in, what do we have? Well, we have the original fascia of the radio, which is very strange surround, which is like a bleh, pyramid slope almost, which means that on the aftermarket surround thing, we've got to make a regular fronted radio fit. It juts forward and comes down horizontally. Um, unfortunately, because this radio has got well, rather a strange arrangement where it's floating in mid-air, these big springy things hold it in place. The replacement radio does kind of rattle around quite a lot. So, oops, that wasn't good. So that's not ideal. Secondly, we've got the speakers. HT223, I believe, is an upgrade on the standard pack. However, only one works. The one in the passenger side door works. The one in the driver's side works. Not very often, it sometimes flickers on for a minute or two, not very frequently. In the back, I had been wondering why these rear speakers were making no noise, until I finally prized off the speaker grill and found out door cards are not very loud. So that is an upgrade that this car never got, so I think we may rectify that today. Our shopping list consists of some wire, speaker wire, because I'm going to rewire the front door speakers because the old cables clearly are broken. I know the driver's door lock is also on the shonky side because it randomly locks and unlocks itself, which means there's another wire through the hinge which needs to be sorted out as well at some point. Meanwhile, I'll, just, I'll only deal with the speakers for today because I'm not taking the entire door card off, hopefully. Um, maybe if I am, I'll deal with that. Secondly, a new head unit. I've gone for the lightest, smallest head unit I could find. I think it was the Amazon or eBay, I forget which. But basically, I went for a retro style and then ultra lightweight, so there's no CD chain, um, player in there. But it's very, very light indeed, so hopefully it'll fit in there and it'll lock in place and not be rattling. I'm also hoping it's retro styled enough that it doesn't look too out of place. The modern ones do look a bit, a bit weird. So, yeah, it's got a bit of a, a 1980s hi-fi vibe about it. A bit like an old 1980s or early 90s Technics, perhaps, if you'd ignore the fact it's got an SD card. Uh, USB slots and phone buttons. So we've got a bit of extra, um, what do you call it, a uh, bit of extra functionality there. Right, what else have we got? And finally, we have got some, some loudspeakers. Now, I have always been a fan of Alpine stuff. I've stuck it in most of the cars that I've ever done upgrades to. I know there are other fine brands available, but I've just always used Alpine stuff, so I'll pick this up. My plan is, because the front door speakers were an upgrade uh, 25 years ago, <laughs> and they still seem to work okay, I will repurpose them into the back of the door for now. If I was going all out for everything, I would put a new electric antenna in the back of the car as well, because this had an electrically motorised radio aerial when it was brand new. Someone's replaced it with a rubber one at some point in the past. However, I'm not that worried, and it's another few pounds of expense so we can live without that for the moment i can come back to it another day if i feel like it oh uh, one more thing to say is once i've got these wires in place i can finally get around to putting the blue plastic trim back around the edges of the doors did i mention you can still get your quentin merchandise on the red bubble store quentin with the red wing um show you're one of the og quentin fans by getting a uh, Quentin mug with the red wing before he comes back from the paint shop literally any day now, I really, really hope, uh, with his non-red painted wing anymore. Right, so we'll start off saying goodbye to the Sony, which has done us proud for a bit on one speaker, but doesn't really look the part. Right, step one done. Gone. Now this goes off to the Volvo loom. And this radio here has its own loom. This is where things get interesting and fun. Yeah, fun is the right word. Hang on, so unplug this for you. So these two big square connectors go into the Volvo car loom. Matching that, we have this connector here, which is power, earth, 
um, switch ignition and uh, electric aerial. Do we even need to change that one? No, I don't think we do. That one should still be working absolutely fine. No need to mess around with that one. That's a nice spare one for the box. And then we've got this one, which is the speakers. Now what we can do is dispense with that plug, not run that into anything, and just wire this plug here straight into the radio and wire these cables here into the new door wire cable speaker things. Does that make sense? I think so. It doesn't make sense. And how does it look in there? It looks good. Can I change gear? Yeah, more or less. Because <clears throat> one thing I have found with any aftermarket radio in this car is that because it's so much further forward than the original one was, because it was slanting away with the dashboard, when you go to first, third or fifth, you bash your knuckles into it. Right, let's get some wire cut. Right, so let's try and measure up some lengths of wire to go into the various crevices of this dashboard. That is so tiny, isn't it? So loaded with stuff. It's got Bluetooth, aux in, USB in, uh, micro SD, everything. It's not got DAB, I don't think, from memory. No, it's not got DAB. But you know, it's just absolutely loaded with everything you could want. And it's about 30 pounds, it's almost free. Almost, almost free, not quite free. Oh, this is gonna be interesting. The radio antenna is a little too short for me to get my knuckles onto. I'm not quite sure how I managed to do that. That'll be fun to play with. Now, this is the beginning of cars being properly integrated on the interior. So underneath the dashboard, there is like a plastic kick plate thing with a bit of sponge on the back for sound deadening to make the whole thing look very tidy. And you need to get behind that to run a cable from the door to the uh, in central column, uh, central stack, sorry. And all, to get into that, all you need is two Phillips head screwdrivers and one little plastic tag, you turn the key on and the thing just lowers down. Then you can get a cable up into the middle bit, somehow. Oh, I can feel it, I can't reach it. There's too much HVAC in there. There we go, got it. So there, that is driver's door, which then runs down below that. There's other stuff on cable tight too. And then out into the door itself, which actually just, those just pry off, really simple. And there is my speaker. Something I really ought to look at on this door is this check strap. Doesn't seem to do its job very well, or at all in fact. So one day I must get around to doing that. And these look like they've been changed once already because uh, there is, oh no, sorry, ignore that. Now why, you may ask, am I doing this job now of all times and I've had the car a year already and ignored it all this long? Well it's because on Saturday I'm going to the Festival of the Unacceptable, or Unexceptional or something. In fact this video may actually go out on Saturday, so you may be watching it while I'm there. Or I might put it out on Thursday, I don't know really. And on my scheduling, there we go, so that's that removed and that I can reuse in the back door. And this cable here, oops, just feed myself out enough to, to do it. And hopefully I do have enough to do all of the bits. Let's cut a bit extra long. But then I can feed this out through this grommet here and hopefully we can get this out into the door. Right, so this grommet here out into the door is so tight, it's not true. Uh, it would not accept another cable through there whatsoever. So I've run this beside the grommet so I can push that back in on it again and then feed that up there, tape this all together inside there in a second and feed that into the door. So there we have one speaker cable installed as far as the door's concerned. Just need to put some ends on it. I was about to say I would definitely recommend getting hold of one of these cable insulation stripper things because they make life so much easier and it wouldn't prove me wrong. 
So let's do a bit of a crimpy McCrimperson just here. Hopefully the door will stay in the same place long enough to do this. There we go. That was a relief. Right, so that's all crimped up, connected up. Those old cables are shoved into the door out of the way. That can go in there. Unfortunately, it looks like these screw holes don't exactly add up to where they used to be. So I'm trying to screw this into a new position that's not going to interrupt or affect the pegs that clip the, uh, the cover on. Now obviously the tighter you can hold a speaker in place, the better it will sound. So you don't really want it to be rattling around loose if you can at all help it. This over. I don't need to mix it. Yeah, I'm going to mix some modifications, aren't I? If I just take the end of that little leg off, it should be enough to allow me to oops, get that cover grill back on again without too much aggro, I hope. No, I'm not having it. Why aren't you having it? Have it. Have it, you so and so. There we go. Alpine speaker fitted. You'd never know. Awesome. Right now, that cable can be tidied up there in a minute. First of all, before I finish on this side, I'm going to run a cable to the back door, which means the same kind of deal again. Lay cable all the way from there, down the side of the car, into the back of the car which is then going to run up on inside that B post and go out into the door as we did last time. I'm hoping that grommets can be a bit more forgiving to be honest. Now I've got these cable tied up out of the way to keep them neat and tidy and I've labelled them so I know which one's which when it comes to do the connections in a minute. Genius! Like a diamond bullet. So there you go, there's wiring in the, hidden inside there and you'd never know it had come off. Just need to put the other, the kick panel back in and this, this trim down here, then the car will look so much nicer. I will just say these are the original, or at least original Volvo, maybe not the original, but certainly original Volvo speakers. So I guess they probably are 1988. They've lasted really well. If you can think about how the ones in my Mini and my Rover Coupe lasted and they're five and 15 years newer respectively. Interesting. There we go, two more crimpy McCrimpersons and we are in there. That's both front speakers wired in. Well, into the doors anyway. Done-ish. Right, now fortunately this little uh, handbook thingy with the radio does tell you what colour wires go to where, so you're not going to put all the earths on the same speaker by mistake. All I'm connecting up is the two greens are front left, the two whites are front are rear left, then you've got the two greys are front right, and the two purples are rear right and the one to the black stripe is the earth. You really can't go wrong. Famous last words. I have been very tempted to actually just use the um, the clampy things, which is a very bad practice, but so much quicker and easier. Now I've lost the solder. I'm trying really hard not to get any burns from the solder onto the seat. It's my big concern right now. Ow, damn it, that's hot. Right, so 
Now before I go and put the trim back in the car, and I'll just say for quickly, I am so glad I managed not to melt any of the uh, fabric or surrounds of the car. Now let's go and get this all connected up. The antenna, aerial, which is a little short for my purposes here. Unfortunately, because this new radio is so much shallower, I've got a lot of space back here to play with. So much room for activities. Like before, when I was putting the Sony one in, it was actually really hard to cram all the cables in here. This time though, it should actually be fairly easy. Connecty, connecty, what? Oh, don't. Ah, yes, see what I did there? Deliberate mistake, obviously, to connect the old speakers, which I'm not using anymore. Well, what I needed to be doing was connecting that one up. Uh, find the aerial. Uh, I'm gonna try and finagle this in there somehow, which is not gonna happen. There's just no more giving that to take it out. There we go. Now, does this power up? Oh, yeah, it's got a clock on it. Power button. Oh, yeah. Got noise out of both speakers. Only crackles because there's no aerial, but obviously. Different crackles. I think it's radio too but crackly. Okay, it works. I just need to figure out a way of making that aerial go in there. Ah. Oh, there we go, I'm in there. Now, of course, it's not. This is not the most easy little finagling. This is possibly the trickiest thing of the entire build. Okay, now, oh, damn it, and I just put a, oh, it's so close. Let's try that again, see if the aerial makes any difference. Hey. I think I'm going to have a strong enough by myself. Very nice. I'm alone tonight. She's a so little strong There we go. Enough. Always sounds a bit like a Bond girl. We've got a little, a little bit of Sarah Cox just there, talking about Stroganoff. So, right now, the problem I've, <laughs> it works. Problem is, I didn't do the brackety thing on the back of it. Oh, damn it. Right, so there we go, right. Now, next, ah, oh, working backwards with this thing. So, Put this thing in here, bend the little things in there, so I've got a cage for it to clip into, and then I can really cut my fingers up on it, which is gonna make putting the aerial in absolutely impossible. Ah. Okay, yeah, oh, 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 is this actually working this time? No, of course it's not, because I've put the metal cage in and now I can't fold the clips in, oh my God, which is so annoying. Oh, okay, right, so. <coughs> oh, dear me. Oh, fold all the little bits of metal out again. Oh, right. Right, so now, everything's in place except for the fact that I've now no way of getting the bloody aerial into it. Ah, gotcha, in. Okay, now I need to check the power lead. Let's do speakers first. Uh, it's kind of there. Ah, yeah, it's licked in. It's a little bit of rattledge in there, but it's only very, very cheap off internet, so what do we expect? Ha! Just thought before I put these trim bits back in, I'd better give them a bit of a clean up because they are disgusting right now. You can see, that's the blue it should be, and that's the brown it is. Kind of a shame you can't put these into the washing machine. Oh, dishwasher, that'll do it. It's actually an alloy wheel cleaning brush, but 
I guess it's pretty good for getting into all the texture of this plastic as well. Man, this has faded so badly. Right, time has kind of beaten me. It's about to rain and I need to be inside. It's half past six already. The day has flown by. Uh, what I've found though is that the connections are inside the door for these speakers, yellow and white and white cables with connectors on the end. So I've hooked those up on both sides and I've put the uh, side trim back for the time being. But what I'm thinking I might do is actually uh, connect this bit of wiring into the loom behind there because this rubber bung is really firmly put in there and there's a proper connector block in there. So if I can sort of hack into the loom somehow, I can, well, you know, graft it in somehow, cleverly. <laughs> cleverly and unobtrusively. Uh, Save me having to mess up all that bit of rubber. But moving into the front of the car, we now finally have after, well, two, three efforts, a functioning modern radio, which kind of blends fairly well into the dashboard. It doesn't look too obtrusive as the other ones looked a lot too modern. This one's claimed to be retro styled and it does look kind of, yeah, say old fashioned like a Technics or a Hitachi or something, or a Panasonic from the mid eighties. So we're looking quite good here. It does apparently have a very useful and in no way confusing and useless remote. Uh, but we do have phone charging, USB input, AUX input and Bluetooth, which at some point I will work out how all that stuff works because I'm going to the festival of the unacceptable on Saturday and I've got about four hours each way in the car so I want my audible playing right well thank you very much indeed for joining me in this adventure of making audio stuff happen in my old mis oh, not Mercedes it's a Volvo um, if you uh, liked following this on then please do join me again next time when we're doing something else on another car I'll try and put the radio stuff on the other cars a few videos down the line so it's not an all audio channel for a bit as always please do hit like subscribe head over to redbubble grab yourself a mug a t-shirt a sticker and i'll see you again next time doing something completely different